Hello everyone, it's Dilly Sims, and I'm back. This should be part two of the first Sex in the City in San My- No, Sex- What am I calling it? Sex in the City San My Shuno Apartments, I believe? Yes, I believe that's what I'm calling it. If you haven't watched the first part, I do recommend you watching it. If not, you don't have to watch the first part to see this part because it's all just a speed build anyways. But let me catch you up if you decide not to. So as you all may know, I really do like the TV show Sex and the City. And so I was inspired to build their apartments using apartments in San Maishuno, like apartments that have the same more or less layout. And so this is Charlotte's apartment that I'm working on. Even though it's not an apartment, it's a penthouse. Because Charlotte, in the TV show, is very desperate to find love. And then she does, and she finds the perfect love. She finds a doctor, her dream man, and she marries him. And he just so happens to have a penthouse because, you know, he's perfect and everything that she's ever wanted in a man, including the, pen the penthouse on the Upper East Side is included in marrying her man. So I'm building her penthouse. There are a few, a lot of rooms actually in this penthouse that I, you don't get to see in the TV show, like the entry, the entrance way with the elevator and everything from the dining room to the left, basically, and everything from the study on. And that's because I didn't know, I knew more or less the floor plan from watching the TV show, but I didn't know what else was lingering beyond the walls of the dining room. So I went on to Google because Google is my friend. And there's somebody who does fantasy floor plans, I believe that's what it's called. And so basically they just build floor plan or er, draw out for floor plans of famous TV shows like if you watch the TV show Friends they have floor plans from the Friends apartments and Frasier I believe and then Sex and the City of course and so it just so happens somebody wanted them to build or draw out I is the proper term the floor plan for Charlotte York's apartment I'm running out of breath right now Ooh, breathe Dylan and so I found it and I just basically copied it and let me say this isn't the first time that I've actually built this apartment I have built it once when I was playing by myself or myself for one of my sims but it was a different layout like the bedroom and the living I can't say living room yeah the, where the bedroom is that's where I put the living room and where the study slash what is it called walk-in closet I put the bedroom in that area and I'm so sorry that this is such a long speed build of one apartment or penthouse whichever way you want to look at it and Charlotte's apartment is of course or I'm gonna keep calling it apartment so Charlotte's apartment, of course, is a very classy apartment on the Upper East Side where only the rich people can afford it. And so it obviously, from the inside and maybe the outside, I didn't pay too much attention to the outside because that doesn't matter to me. When I furnished the apartment, I did take pictures from the TV show as a reference of what it might look like. Well, not what it might look like, what it does look like. And I try to furnish it all accordingly. So, but there are a few rooms, like, I don't know, like, want to call it the sunroom, that is ridiculously over the top. And you'll see it because I'll point it out because it's like yellow. <laughs> that was a horrible color choice in my part because I don't think Charlotte would ever allow yellow to happen in her. Especially, oh, here it comes. This is the room I'm talking about talking about the sunroom and I didn't know what to do with it because the floor plan layout doesn't have anything written 
so I just assumed that this was just a room where she had chairs to sit and stare outside. Because she had these two rooms connected and I was like, I don't know what this is for, it's not a living room. Or is it? Do I even have a living room? I never put a living room in here. But yet again, you never get to see her living room in the TV show, so... It's okay, I guess. So that yellow monstrosity is her sunroom. So she has a lot of curtains and she just gets to sit there and look out the windows. Wow, I wish I could redo that because I would have changed those two rooms a lot. And this is the master bathroom and it is connected to the study. And the study does have, I think in the TV show it does have doors to the master bedroom. It's a very interesting floor plan, I think. And I tried to keep it, like I said, very, very classy, very, very Upper East Side, Charlotte, York. And I do, I realize, and I'm so sorry, that I, when I furnished the apartment, I put a, I can't say put, I left a lot of extra space. You'll see, like, there is, a football field distance between the bed and the door that leads into the study. And, ooh, and here comes my favorite thing to build. I love building kitchens in The Sims and I love this kitchen so much. <clears throat> this might be one of my favorite kitchens I have ever built ever. But I think I I think that every time I build a kitchen. But I'm just so proud of myself. I love it. And I did something new with the, I don't know what it's called, the thingy that sucks in hot air. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a chef. I don't know how to cook too well. I do like to cook, but I don't know how to cook too well. So I'm so sorry if I mispronounce, which I am mispronouncing it because I'm calling it the thing that sucks up the hot air. <sighs> yeah. But I was really proud of myself for that. Do you guys ever like play The Sims and then you're, you're watching something on the side and you, I don't know, I want to call it imprint where like you remember a certain scenario or what you're doing at the moment, like if you're playing The Sims again. Does that make sense? Like right now, looking at this kitchen, I realized that I was watching um, one of my favorite YouTubers called Kelly K-Pop. I think that is her name but her YouTube name is K-Pop and she plays video games and stuff and she was playing Victorious. So right now I remember her playing Victorious and yelling at Jade for being, you know, a stupid bitch. <laughs> and yeah, do you guys ever get that? Or is it just me? I think it might just be me. I do recommend you guys watching Sex and the City. I love it. It, I have to say, it is a show written for women, but the ideas and themes that are presented, both men and women, straight men, gay men, straight women, lesbian women, every human who has ever dated anybody, the themes presented presented in this TV show will apply to you 100%, I swear it because it deals with, you know, relationships, finding somebody new, and it's not like all the gr these four girls, Carrie, Miranda, and Samantha, oh, and Charlotte, four. It's not like they all think the same, like, Carrie is a nice balance of all of them. Samantha just wants to have sex with people. Miranda doesn't believe in the fairy tale ending. Charlotte wants the perfect marriage and wants, you know, a happy, happily ever after and all that cute stuff. Oh, and I love what I did here with this. That was, oh, I'm so happy. That looks so great. And she, like I said, Carrie's just a little good balance of everything. She wants sex, but she's also very skeptical of everyone sometimes because she is also batshit crazy. She does crazy shit all the time. And, but she also does want, you know, not the perfect marriage, but she wants to, you know, be in a relationship with somebody. I think she quotes something around long lines of, I'm looking for love. Can't live without each other. Time consuming love or something like that. It's, 
a nice quote. I like it. Um, let me talk about a few scenes that happen in this apartment. Uh, because that's what I did in the last few, so why might as well talk about it now. And like the other apartments, this apartment doesn't get a whole bunch of face time, I guess. Because the TV show mo mostly does focus around Carrie and her relationships. And the girls are just there for the ride. And like Carrie says in book number two, they're her meal ticket. She writes about them and they're failing their relationships. So she can, you know, es escort? No. Expose them? No. It's called when you're taking advantage of someone. It's going to come to me. Extort. So she can extort them for money to write her books. Oh, let me think. A few things that happened in this part. Okay, so Charlotte marries her rich husband doctor and his name is oh my god what's his name i want to call him paul but that's not right george richard orson no orson hodges it's he plays a different character doctor i don't know i know he's scottish i don't know so she marries her like rich doctor and her dreams are coming true and everything is perfect and she has her dream house and her dream man and everything is just falling perfectly into place and she's so happy that she's getting everything she wants and then it's the night before they get married and Charlotte was waiting to have sex with her her new husband I'm just gonna call him Orson because I don't know what his real name is I keep thinking of a name that like goes away I knew what his name was. Anyways, I'm gonna call him Orson for now. So, they're about to have sex the night before the wedding, and then he couldn't get it up, and she freaks out, and she calls Carrie, because apparently when you have any problem with any relationship, you should call Carrie, because, you know, she hasn't ruined multiple relationships herself. Let me just take a sip of my Cosmo. That's refreshing. What was I? Oh, yes. And then Carrie goes, Okay, Charlotte, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna... Sorry about the way I sounded there. She goes, Okay, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna take a piece of paper and put it on top of his penis while he is sleeping. And then the next morning, you check, and if the paper is ripped, that means he can get an erection. And it's not a physical problem and that means it's an emotional problem and so she does <laughs> and when you're watching this whole this thing go down you're like wow Trey oh my god his name is Trey it's not Orson his name is Trey so I'm gonna call him Trey from now on so <laughs> you're watching like her in a very PG-13 way they don't show the penis or anything putting a little like stamp like the postage stamps the old school ones where you like lick them and put them on the postage. I know a lot of you guys have never mailed a letter and don't know how to write like write an address. You guys are so lucky. I had to do that. Um, and so she puts it on his penis and the next day it's ripped and she's so excited and then she realizes, oh my gosh, that means there's something wrong with me. That's a little thing that happened. There was one time when they were when Charlotte and Trey, they realize that it's not Trey's... Okay. They tried for a baby for a very long time. And then... They see a doctor. And then they realize it's not Trey's fault. That they can't have a baby. It's Charlotte's. And so, more of Charlotte's life is going to shit. And... They interview a couple. And the couple's so excited to give them the baby when it gets born. And then they, Charlotte and Trey find out that they were just, like, basically using them as a free meal ticket to come to New York City. Not a whole lot of exciting, fun stuff happens in this apartment. In this apartment, it's mostly just Charlotte losing everything, basically. Okay, here, let me throw a few good stories in there because Charlotte does get a happily ever after. Sure, it's not the way she originally wanted to be with a rich doctor husband, but 
her and Trey try so hard to get to have a baby and it doesn't work. And then I forget exactly what happens, but Trey and Charlotte decide they're going to get a divorce. And Trey left the apartment to Charlotte and Charlotte's, not Charlotte, Trey's mom, whose name is Bunny, comes back to the apartment. She's like, this is not your apartment. It belongs to the McDougals. And she tries to sue Charlotte for the apartment. So Charlotte gets a lawyer and he's a Jewish lawyer. And then, and he's not attractive. He is bald and he is short. And Charlotte realizes she starts to fall in love with him. And then they start having sex. And not only does she win the apartment because Trey comes in during their like legal battle with um, Bunny. She wins the apartment and she also starts dating her new joy, joyish, Jewish lawyer, whose name is, oh my gosh, what's his name? Why can't I remember any of these characters' names? Harry. His name is Harry. And it's funny because his name is Harry and he has no hair on his head, but he has hair all over his body. And they show that in the TV show, like he's walking around naked, but again, you, it's very PG-13. You don't get to see any like body parts. And he is covered in hair. It's like a gorilla. <laughs> and her and him, they try really hard to have a baby, but then they end up adopting at the very, very end of the sixth season. And the sixth season is the last season of the TV show. And they adopt a cute little baby girl from China named Lily. Oh, I really liked the study. The first time I built this study for my sims, I made it a little smaller and I loved how small I made it the first time. The second time around, it looks nice, but like I said, I feel like there's just a whole bunch of extra room everywhere. And it doesn't look too appealing to the eye. Sure, it gives you more room to add stuff and add more walls, but I'm not going to be sharing this on the gallery with you guys because I don't know how to... Sorry, I just like whacked my finger up against my desk because I don't know how to share apartments because I know you can't share an apartment. And I haven't, I'm not gonna be sharing the other apartments, so I didn't think it was fair to share this apartment, especially since I don't like the way the apartment looks from the outside. The inside is beautiful, I think. Like, I would love to live in this apartment myself. Sure, the floor plan is a little weird and you have to cross from the master bedroom through the living room, which, the two rooms are so big that it's like crossing two deserts just to get to the bathroom. But also connected to the bathroom by just like a little walk area is the walk-in closet. So it's super inconvenient for you to go change there and then walk back to your bedroom if you forgot something. And back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> so, I mean, I would love to live in this apartment, but there are just a few very, very minor items. And this just happens to be one of them. Let me just take another sip of my Cosmo because my mouth is getting really dry. I love doing this. I, this is probably one of my favorite things to do is voiceovers for this. But I just talk forever to the point where my mouth is dry. So let me just take a sip. One minute, everyone. Maybe two sips. like my right yes this is my left this is my right my right like under rib hurts I don't know why what is this oh gross um I just found like a little piece of string from my curtain because my curtains like a, a blind not a blind the blinds so it's, you know, connected by a string and there are multiple pieces of wood if you don't know what blinds are. Like, the piece of wood, or the piece of wood, the piece of string, like, detached and for some reason turned brown. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. And this bedroom is really well beautifully furnished. I just wish I had more, or less space to work with because I made this bedroom way too huge. And I think... Because there's like a whole extra room so you could like, I don't know, wrestle if you want. And I don't mean sex, I actually mean wrestle. Like, you know, you and your significant other could like wrestle in the middle of your 
bedroom if you chose to. You know, each marriage is different. Not one perfect idea fits for every marriage. So, you know, if you wrestle with your significant other, good for you. Just please don't hurt each other. And I really mean wrestling, like, wrestling. Please don't be, like, stabbing and punching each other in the face and calling the cops. And <laughs> please don't. Yeah. Now, my rib is really hurting and I don't know why. <sighs> oh, I need to write it. Check this off my checklist. I have a little checklist of things I have to do for my YouTube channel. Um, I had another thing to tell you guys. Ooh, juicy gossip at work. So, at my place of business, there was a lead posting. And the lead is just slightly under, is like a step under supervisor, but just a step above regular employee. So they had this lead post posting, and I didn't apply because I don't care about my company anymore. I used to a long time ago, like I loved going to work, but multiple things have changed and not anymore. And it's fine because not everybody loves their job and that's the, that's the realization of life. Get ready kids if you're getting out of high school right now. Let me tell you, go to college because you do not want to be making sandwiches for the rest of your life. I know people who that is what they plan on doing for the rest of their lives. Not me, of course, because I'm going to college. But my coworker, I'm not going to say her real name, so let's call her Olive. Yes, my coworker, Olive. <laughs> so, but there was a lead position posted, and it caused so much drama, guys. Like, so much drama. So, there is this one coworker of mine who is the worst human being I have ever met. She, I don't know what to name her. I will call her Rachel. Because, oh, I did have a Rachel who used to work with me. But she doesn't work with me anymore, so it's fine. So, well, I'm going to call her Rachel. So Rachel is the worst human. She talks shit about me to my friends and everyone else. She talks shit about everybody to everybody. And she has been pulled into the office and had talkings to about talking shit about everybody. And so, she applied for this lead position with, um, let's see, one, two, three, like five other people. And so eventually, er, they had their meetings, and then eventually each one of them had a phone call, knocked off, knocked off, knocked off, and then it was left to three people. I'm not going to give real names, except for Heather, because she's my best friend. So, Rachel, David, and my friend Heather. Those were the three last people, and th these were two lead positions that were posted. Oh, and I did put a menorah because Charlotte does marry a Jew. Anyways, but going back to my story, because my story is much more important than the speed build. So those three people, David, Rachel, and Heather, were the last three people, and there were two positions open. And so... Heather gets a phone call and she and my boss says sorry you were late 17 minutes um, two months ago so we're gonna we can't use you as an actual candidate and so my friend Heather got really pissed and the, my company I don't know it's a love-hate relationship sometimes it's not the best place to work and it's changed management but it was her last straw. So she quit and she put in her two weeks and she's found another job and I'm very proud of her for leaving. And so we all assumed that the last two jobs went to the last two people standing, David and Rachel. And Rachel was being a little bitch. Like she called up Heather and she was like, oh, Heather, I'm so sorry that they didn't give it to you. But hey, they gave it to me and David, so. At least they gave it to people who had brains. And she is such a little snake in the grass. <laughs> and then the other day I went into work because um, 
I had a date, so I went to to my place of business because we sell food there. And I was picking up my food at the counter, and my coworker, I'm gonna name her Patty because that's her name for short, comes up to me and she goes, "Dylan, do you want to hear some juicy gossip?" And I was like, "Does a bear shit in the woods?" And she looks at me and she goes. So they called Rachel into the office the other day, or today, and I was like, oh really? And she goes, yeah, they called her into the office, and then she left crying. She didn't get the lead position. And I was so happy, and so was everyone. It was like a glorious day. Like everyone is, because everyone knows she is not a good person, except for apparently my bosses, but I also do feel like my bosses have a conspiracy theory of, among themselves to try to get us all to quit and so, so they told a girl whose name I'm gonna say is Katie and so they told a girl named Katie who applied that she couldn't get it like she didn't get it and then after they called Rachel into the office they called up Katie and was like oh you can have the lead position after all and, you know, after, like, they promised it away to somebody else, technically, because that's what they always do. And I, that's exactly what it is. It is just a formality, but that's exactly what it is. It's just a formality because that's what my company has to do before they hire anybody, but they know who they're going to hire beforehand. And I was so happy that she... And we can't say, I'm so happy that she went home crying, but that's, a, you know, a nice plus. But I was so happy that she was not my lead because ugh, I have five leads. Or at the beginning of this year, I only respected one. And now out of all five, I respect, include, these are including the new people, the two new people. Because they replaced the two people that left. I respect one, two, three, four out of the five. So that means a lot to, I don't know, me as an employee because when I started off this year, and this year, I mean, it's only like April, right? Yeah, April. So to start off four months ago, not respecting anybody and feeling like if I tell anyone my, any conflicts that I'm having here at work, they A, won't be resolved and B, will just be spread like rumors and gossip to being able to trust and respect four of my five leads that's amazing to me at least because like I said four months ago I didn't trust anybody so yeah and I am thinking about leaving myself but I don't know because I do want to be a teacher too and to be a teacher in Merced County because that's where I live excuse me I burped be a teacher in Merced County, you need to have 84 units of college credit, and you have to pass, I believe it's Eureka. Not Eureka, but like, your space Rika. Rika is a, a test you have to take to be a teacher. If you take those two, you could be a substitute teacher, the 84 units, and pass Eureka. And I've been going to school for the past close to four years, three years, and if I've been taking 12 units, for 12 times 6 is, well, let's see, 12 times 4 is 48, plus another 6 mm, units because I took a summer course. I don't know. Okay, I'm racking up really close to 80 units, if anything, because last summer I did take 3 classes which was probably 12 units within itself because I did take math and math I did go to class five days a week so yes I'm gonna say I'm really I can't say really really close but within a year I will be maybe hopefully eligible to be a substitute teacher so that's why I haven't applied for a different position or job somewhere because I don't know if in a year from now I could be a substitute teacher and I want to be a regular teacher, so step in the right direction. And why bother looking for another job if I plan on leaving that job anyways? You know what I'm saying? 
maybe this is making more sense to me than it actually does make sense. And right here, sorry, I'm going to talk about my build just for a second. I know you guys love my juicy gossip and stories. I am building Charlotte's daughter's room, her daughter Lily. And in the, sorry, I'm going to talk about stuff that's already happened in this speed build. In the movie, Charlotte has a sexy young nanny, and she's afraid that her husband's gonna leave her na leave her for the nanny. Not that he's ever done anything to like make her worry about it, but Samantha said something about that, and then she was just booty tickled about the whole situation. And so she, her nanny doesn't not wear a bra. Like when she is running, her titties are flopping everywhere. <laughs> and so she her nanny is giving her husband Harry and the nanny are giving the daughter a bath and she's like an infant so she is you know she's taking a bubble bath and having a good time and Charlotte's watching from like the doorway and the door's just like slightly opened and then the baby grabs like the shower hose which is on and turns it on to the nanny and it sprays all over the nanny and then her vulvas are hanging out Okay, not hanging out there wet, but <laughs> I'm making this very PG-13 for you. It's PG-13 for all of my little youngsters who might be watching my videos. Because mm -mm -mm, YouTube is for adults. Just kidding. And I'm sorry, everyone, about the screenshots. I know you want to see screenshots of every single thing that I have built, but... I only took screenshots of things, sets, areas that you might see in the TV show. So that includes the bedroom, the dining room. I took a picture of the kitchen because A, I like the kitchen. I'm really proud of myself with the kitchen. And you do get to see a little bit of the kitchen in the Sex and the City 2 movie. There's another th Oh, in the study. If I did not already say study. The study. Those are the only pictures I took about of the entire speed build. But if you want to see everything, feel free to pause anytime throughout the video and take an in-depth look at every single thing that I have ever put into this apartment. Uh, I think I have talked more than my fair share. I am getting really, really close. I'm thinking maybe in the next five minutes or so. I will start screenshots, hopefully. So I'm going to leave you guys off here because I don't have any more fun, juicy gossip stories to tell you. So like, subscribe, comment. Oh, I, I forgot. How do I do my sign off? I've been doing my sign off for so long. Like, subscribe, comment, and do all those fun YouTube things. And I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Oh, and don't be a Rachel. <laughs>